Nobody, welcome back. I'm Strategy Professor, and today we're doing an updated guide for Season 11 with Recon. So special thanks to Smoky Bun for sponsoring this. If you'd like to sponsor a um, champion guide yourself, just email me at thestrategyprofessor@gmail.com. Let me know what you have in mind, or stop by the stream. We stream every night starting around midnight Eastern Standard Time, only on YouTube. Love to have you. Very friendly, chill community. Um, and be sure to check out the rest of the content on the channel as well. We do fresh tier lists, patch notes, uh, other champion guides, coaching sessions, and all kinds of other stuff on the channel as well, so be sure to check all that out. Okay, let's go ahead and get in here. So, I think Rakan is very underrated right now. Um, he doesn't have an exceptionally high win rate. We're gonna start off just kinda going over the champion and some of the stats about the champion, then we'll talk about strengths, weaknesses, talk about some different itemization options, runes, and then I'll show you some of his common combos in the practice tool that you can think about um, and just talk through some of the different decisions that you might make uh, when you're playing Rakan. Okay, but let's look at uh, support here really quickly. Overall, so if we look at like top win rate supports going into season eleven, I will say the meta overall right now, and this isn't designed just for this patch, but hopefully for something that can last all of season eleven, um, is that we're going to come in with a pretty balanced meta overall. The tanks are still pretty good, like your Leona, your Nautilus. Um, things like that are good. Enchanters are good right now. I will say that AP supports aren't in a great spot as far as like Zyra and stuff like that. They're playable, but they're not amazing. So it's pretty wide open. Um, and Rakan's going to be able to fit right into that. So he's got about a 50% win rate, and that's almost where it always is because he has a lot of difficult decisions that we'll talk through as the guide goes on here. Um, but I think that he can be very good obviously he's going to be good in pro um, with highly coordinated teams but i think even in solo queue he can be good if played correctly um so some of the different stats and items on him and we'll talk about the items here in a little bit that people are doing right now i think that mandate is probably going to get nerfed over the next couple of patches right now it's you know the best one on him in most situations sometimes locket or moonstone might be okay but mandate's still going to be really good um and then stuff like Staff of Flowing Water, Zeke's Ardent Sensor Redemption. There's a lot of different items you can get in different situations that we'll talk through. Um, but I just want to talk through his position in the meta. He's almost always like a 50% a winner. So let's talk about his abilities and like what makes him somewhat challenging to play and why is he strong. Well, he has a really good engage um, off of his R plus his W. It's very unique in that you have four seconds whenever you ult. So that gives you... You know time where you can use it to run people down um, if you're like showing up to a fight you can activate it early to get there faster um, you can run around and tag multiple people in team fights and that's always one of the more difficult decisions with him and I guess I'll just go ahead and pull that ability up here um, is how many people do you go for you just try to hit that one person with the R plus W or do you try to run and tag somebody else because the problem is whenever you try to run and get more people um, and this is one of the biggest baits on Recon. Sometimes you run out of range where you can't safely E back or they will just chain CC you and blow you up before you're able to use your E again. So it's always the tough call is how many people do you go for um, with the R. But yeah, it gives you four seconds. Basically, if you touch somebody and you have to like really basically be right on top of them in order to touch them these days. They did nerf that a couple of years ago. And it charms them for one second, um, all the way up to 1.5 seconds, depending on how many points you have in it. And it does a relatively small amount of damage. But it does give you that movement speed, um, like I said, to show up to fights and to move around in fights um, to attack different people. Now, your basic attack animation is you can only attack somebody that you've already charmed, and it looks like it's like a really short um, attack range on it. So it does limit your auto attacks a little bit. And you cannot cast... Um, you can't flash is in cast time so you can't flash and you can't w right away whenever your r is going on you have to do it beforehand um which is something that they change so you have to wait that half a second you can't just r w instantly you can w first and then r and we'll talk about the different combos later but you can't r and then w and you can't r and um flash either okay um, as far as basic stats go, he's a little bit hardier than it would have seemed. He has 540 base health, which doesn't seem like a lot, but he does get a passive shield, even at early levels for 33. So he basically comes to lane with like 570 health 
with like runes and stuff like that depending on what you take closer to like 580 health and um this shield can heal back over time so if you um if it doesn't break the entire shield let's just say you take like i don't know 30 damage but it doesn't do you know 40 early on and if you don't take damage for five seconds then it will um regenerate all the way back up to full but usually it's going to break in the early game but it's pretty much just converts you know 90 percent of your ap and also this flat amount which becomes pretty significant it's almost 100 at level six into just like free hp that might regen at a certain point so your ap you know almost serves as hp to some extent you can get some really big shields if you get a lot of ap on him and just every time you auto attack or use abilities on people then it lowers the cooldown by one second so if you're just sort of actively looking to trade in the landing phase this will probably be up every 20 to 30 seconds or so just to give you a little bit of extra effective health um he can also recall with zaya if you have zaya you don't have to have zaya on your team in order to be effective as recon these days though it's nice if you have a good zaya player but zaya is pretty far out of the matter right now she hasn't really been that great ever since they nerfed her um cooldown on her ult to 160 seconds at level six which is absurd um but anyway she's kind of in a rough spot right now gleaming quill um i would probably only get one point in this most of the time there are some metas where you want like maybe three points of this and when you would want to get a lot of points in this is if you're going for like an airy and a scorch airy plus scorch build which i don't recommend i think guardians a lot better these days but there has been a build in the past that was airy plus scorch um and you're taking a lot of ap early on which you're kind of doing with mandate anyways you can get ant tome you can take ap runes and things like that and this is pretty decent at harassment it's only 60 mana and it does okay damage up to 250 um so it's dealing 45 extra damage per point which is nice the heal is the same no matter what it's just based on per level in your ap so you heal for the same amount regardless of if you have one point or five points it just depends on if do you want that extra damage or not now they have nerfed this cast time over time by quite a bit it used to be one or two seconds lower but it's still okay 12 seconds is quite a long time for harassment and it's a very slender hitbox it says it's 900 range it feels like it's much less than that but if you consistently hit this every time it's off cooldown it is pretty good because it's going to do you know respectful damage in lane if you get three points into it it's going to do 160 damage um and then it's going to end up healing both you and your ally for 40 each so it's very very cost efficient it doesn't cost any extra mana regardless of how many points you put in it so if you think you're going to be strapped for mana early this could be a decent option the thing is they got rid of a Thien's unholy grail and i think that that was really the best build to go with this because the extra damage that you dealt here would convert over to a bigger heal so like i said one point is okay it does offer you a little bit of harassment early on and it does give you a little bit of a heal so i would probably just go one point now w this is what i would max um first there's a little bit of controversy whether you max your w or your e first the w is going to give you a lot more damage so it does up to 290 damage which is a lot for a base ability and the cooldown goes down significantly so from 18 seconds early to 12 seconds it does cost a bit more mana <clears throat> but this can hit multiple people and this is your cc right this is your knockup so it's a one second knockup and it's your mobility so you can dash and do this anywhere you don't have to have a target so it's different from something like alistar's wq combo in that respect because you can jump over walls with this you can dodge skill shots you can reposition um you know there's a lot of real you can rotate faster like you can you know be rotating somewhere and just jump over a wall and get there you know three or four seconds faster and if this is on a low cooldown then you can comfortably do that like maybe you're running to try to go help your jungler you can do that and get there you know faster and this will be back up off cooldown if you max shield first which we'll talk about in a second then you can't do that you have to hold your w and it has to be a really high impact because you may not get another w in the fight um so anyways it is very good it's damage it's mobility it's your cc um it's just a great ability to have with him now it does have a little bit of a lead time so you probably want to put this 
you know, slightly behind them. This is always a little game of cat and mouse where you can sort of overplay this, but if you're against a Lucian or something, you want to put this like slightly behind them if you can, and then whenever they dash or evade, because most people try to dash or roll like backwards, and if you do that, you might still be able to knock them up even if they're like mid dash. So, but some some people will know that you're doing that, and then they'll actually step forward, and you'll miss with your W. So it's it's definitely a bit of a skill shot more so than something like Alistar, because it does have that delay on it. Okay. And then Battle Dance. Now, this is an extremely powerful shield. It's 140, but remember, you can do this twice. So you can shield twice, and each time you dash to somebody. It does not shield you, but it does shield them. So that's a 280 base shield with a 1.6 AP ratio, which is massive. That's a huge base number. Janna's shield, um, I think, is 240 these days, and it only has a 0.7 ratio. So it's even bigger than Janna's shield. Now, you have to keep in mind, this does not, the shield does not stack though, it just refreshes when you put it on. <clears throat> so you don't wanna do both of these shields at the same time. You can put them on different people if you want, but you can put them on the same person as well. But typically you wanna shield, wait till the first one's about to break, and then shield again um, after that in order to get the maximum effectiveness, or just put the shield on two different people. But it also doubles as your movement, so you want to keep that in mind that sometimes you want to shield somebody just to be able to reposition and get closer to hit a good W or to like run back out. So it's got the shield component, but it also has the movement component to it, and you can do it twice. So there's a lot of decision making with that. If you max this out, um, this also lowers the cooldown significantly. He has very, very long cooldowns on his W and his E, so you have to have points in him to make it effective. So it kind of makes it a pretty tricky choice in the mid game which one you want to get um, and the shield does go up a pretty good amount shield goes up 25 this damage goes up 45 but the shield triggers twice so really it's like a 50 shield every time you um, put points in this so this is especially if you're going to go for more plus healing and shielding if you're going to go for like um, a redemption somewhere in your build this might be a little bit better staff of flowing water is pretty standard right now um, this might go well with something like Moonstone, if you want to go for Moonstone Renewer, just because the longer, the bigger shield you have, the longer you can keep people up. Sorry, camera's flipping out there. We'll just fix that. Okay. Um, so there's definitely an argument to be made. I wouldn't max this like flat out in the laning phase, but you could get three points in W and then max shield after that. We can see what are the different, it's probably not gonna tell you that like nuanced how many points you put into it but um yeah the flat out shield max is only going to give you 50 percent to maxing shield and maxing w which is the lowest of all of them so i would not max shield flat out but i think that the w then e is the way to go and that's also the highest win rate one here statistically just because once again this is you know your damage and you want to be able to convert your kills whenever you use your r plus your w on somebody you want that person to die um because you have such long cooldowns you can do extended fights but you really want the fight to turn in your favor pretty quickly um off of your big cooldowns so anyways very effective very mobile uh, i'll show you some combos here near the end of the video so his strengths, he has very high mobility. He has um, engage plus scaling. That's a big thing with him that I forgot to mention with the E. Obviously, because he's a plus healing and shielding champion, he gets a lot of benefit out of stuff like Staff of Flowing Water, Redemption, Ardent Sensor. A lot of the most powerful enchanter items he can actually get and use really well. Unlike something like Leona, Nautilus, even Bard to an extent, just does not scale very well with plus healing and shielding. But Rakan does and he has a really good engage, which is very rare. So you can build him tanky-ish. I don't think you want to do that. The closest I would get to something like that would be like a Zeke's, which I still don't think is that great. I really think you want to be on the Staff of Flowing Water as secondaries right now. It's just such a strong item and synergizes so well with him. We'll talk about that here in a second. But um, another thing is because he's so mobile, because he can go in and get back out, you don't have to be tanky as much because ideally you shouldn't be getting hit. His big weakness is CC. If you're against something like that stops mobility, like Poppy or Vagar or point click CC, um, you know, things like Lissandra, Malzahar, um, stuff like that can be really difficult for him to deal with because you're just not gonna be that tanky. Your base armor, your base health is not that high. You're just not designed to 
take a lot of hits. So you really want to try to be able to outplay most CC. And you want to be very careful with a lot of line skill shots. So like Lux throwing or more, you know, just throwing that line skill shot straight at you. You've got to anticipate it and flash it or sidestep it or otherwise, you know, dodge it. Because if you get hit by one of those big pieces of CC, it's going to be a big problem. But very, uh, very good engage and scaling, flexible itemization and play style. He can peel, he can engage. Um, he's good with, you know, just a ton of different items. So we'll talk about all that in a second. Weaknesses, difficult decisions. You have three different movement abilities with your W and your two E triggers. And figuring out how you want to sequence that, who you want to protect, who you want to peel, who you want to um, engage on, how many targets you want to try to touch with your ultimate without being too greedy. All of these um, can be difficult decisions for Rakan. So we'll, we'll walk through a couple scenarios here in a second. You get punished very heavily for mistakes. You're very squishy. If you get CC'd and caught out, you're dead. You have really long cooldowns. So if you use your cooldowns incorrectly, that's going to be a problem. And you really have to understand like what your role is in specific fights and just who you're trying to play around um, in the game and which types of items and which... Um, yeah, which lanes you should be focusing on. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the itemization here for a little bit. Um, I don't have the items pulled up, but I think it, it tells us if we hover. It Okay, it's pretty accurate. There's some stuff that's kind of goofy, but um, this should work. So Imperial Mandate is going to be the best item right now to get on Recon most of the time. Now, its win rate's not as high as Locket or Moonstone. A lot of stuff can be good on Recon. I did really, really like Night Harvester, but it's been nerfed pretty hard over time. I had like an 80% win rate at the start of the preseason with Night Harvester. I'm a D4 support main too. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the video, so I'm not like a challenge or anything. I did um, get as high as number eight, in quotes, Recon in a... Um, really early in the season when a lot of people weren't playing him and I was like up in Diamond 3 but um, anyways I've, I've played a lot of Rakan. I've played like 2,000 games as Rakan at least. Um, he's been pretty close to my one trick for two or three years. Definitely my most played. Um, but Mandate has been nerfed and it will get nerfed again. I'm calling it right now. Maybe not the first patch but very soon because you still, they did nerf the upfront damage on it because like Ash is getting it and then you had these mid laners like Cassiopeia, Rise. Everybody was getting this because it's got a really goofy interaction. If you look at coordinated fire right there, it says abilities that slow or immobilize a champion deal 90 to 150. Now that's not updated, that's been nerfed. So it's way less than that now. I think it's something like 30, like 30 to 60. But then they changed the second part to be like, uh, 120 to 180 so if you trigger both parts it's the same damage but the first part does less damage than it did in the past so it's no longer 90 but the the premise is if you just slowed somebody doing anything then it triggers this with no cooldown right so anytime you hit anybody with the slow it basically did extra damage right but then you get to the second part if an ally touches the person, so it, it marks them for four seconds if you hit them with the first part, and then if someone hits them with the second part, then they take extra damage and you and the person who triggers it get 20% extra movement speed for two seconds, and that has a six second cooldown. So it's kind of like a Leona mark where you, know, you just touch somebody with something and then if they get hit again, then it triggers it and does extra damage. So the first part, um, has no cooldown though if your ally doesn't touch them and you just keep slowing them with stuff so if you just keep auto attacking them with ashes slow um then that works or if you get rylize and you keep hitting them with like cassiopeia's twin fangs that does extra damage so that's and it's a cheap item now it's only 2500 gold it was 2700 but that's going to get this item nerfed but this thing's really good on recon it's basically the de facto item on almost everybody it's got ability power health haste a little bit of mana regen it's just everything that he wants is 2500 gold and you can tag a bunch of people with your ult when you go in so you can put this on two or three different people pretty comfortably you can trade in the lane with it you just knock them up with your w q them auto attack them and then dash back out so it's got good trading and a lot of people really overlook this mythic passive is one of the best in the game 15 ability power for each mythic passive that's 300 gold extra value for every um 
other legendary that you have and your warding item counts as a legendary so it's basically going to come stock with 55 ability power and as soon as you complete staff of flowing water it's pretty much going to have 60 ability power so extremely strong item overpowered definitely going to be nerfed because there's people from all sorts of other lanes poaching this item so it's going to get nerfed now shirelia's battle song is another one i didn't even mention it on here because you pretty much just want to go imperial mandate all the time but they are buffing this up we'll see how it goes this is just a little bit of a confused item they are making it 60 percent decaying movement speed so um that is really nice for engage so if you do have stuff like these meatball champs that want to get in there and engage your olaf darius garen you know just a lot of these champs that have a hard time sticking to people and you just want to be able to run in and start that fight and this is going to get a lot better with 60 percent um as of 11.1 .1. at least that's what they're previewing right now so Historically, that's been a very good item on Rakan. The 350 health is nice. 20 ability haste. All of them have 20 ability haste. The movement speed's very good. It used to be 10%. Now it's 5%. It's got a little bit of mana reach in, so it's okay. Um, the big thing is it just it doesn't add a lot of damage. It's only 35 to 55 damage, which I've had people say, well, you know, the damage doesn't matter that much. I guess it's it's okay though like each person it's going to be 45 per for the next three attacks so that's going to come in at like 135 damage if you get a hold of them um from each person so that can be pretty decent it's the 90 second cooldown it feels really bad i wish they would take it down to 60 that'd be fantastic but um i don't know i mean that's about the same as mandate if you trigger mandate on somebody in a fight I don't remember the exact number but it's something close to this it's gonna be you know something like 200 ish damage and this this one's like whatever i just said like 135 so mandate's doing about 50 percent more damage or so um and it's you know has virtually no cooldown six seconds even so you can run around and in kind of yolo queue where you're just you know showing up at like skirmish after skirmish after skirmish mandate's going to keep putting up good value for you versus this is only going to do something every 90 seconds uh and it doesn't have any ap on it so this is 40 ap which is like over 800 gold value is that i don't know and recon scales so well with ap like we just talked about a second ago his um his E is a 1.6 ratio, his passive's a 0.9, his Q's a 0.7, his W's a 0.9. So he just loves, loves, loves having AP. It's so powerful on him. And look at this Dinky Mythic passive, 2.5% extra movement speed. It's like, okay, you get like a third of a boot or something like that off of your next legendaries. It's far, far, far weaker than the uh mandate 15 ability power they really need to lower that to like 10 ability power or something 15 is just so much so anyways you're giving up so much you're giving up about 60 ability power like we mentioned with the with the passives so yes this can be good the movement speed can be good we'll see the 60 percent is very nice in certain team comps i think maybe that can be legit but it just lacks so much raw power Locket is something that's definitely worth considering if your team if they have a lot of damage on their team a lot of just aoe team fight damage they've got rumble cannon fiddlesticks that kind of stuff locket is certainly respectable um especially in kind of longer team fights and if you pair this with redemption you can have a really like really solid team fight so locket's definitely respectable um the big knock on locket it doesn't have the ap which once again kind of sucks you do get the resistances so if you're afraid you're just going to get hit by stuff, there's just no way around it, right? Fiddlesticks is just going to do damage to you in a team fight, you know, that kind of thing. Maybe that is pretty good. Um, but uh, this is very good if you want to go for, like I said, the redemption, because the plus 20% healing and shielding works really well with Locket. Um, so he does have some nice synergies out there with this item, but it just it doesn't have the mana regen either. If you go redemption, that's going to have mana regen on it, but... You got to be careful. You almost certainly want to go Frost Fang if you're going to go for Locket because you're just not going to have enough regen if if you don't do that. And then Staff of Flowing Water or um, the Moonstone Renewer is it has the exact same stats as Imperial up top, so that's really nice. You're not losing out on the AP, and it does give you some really nice healing and shielding for longer engages and longer fights. Um, 
this would be pretty good if you're going for like a three points in W, then shield max, and then follow this up with a redemption for the plus 20% healing and shielding. The numbers on this can get pretty big. Um, I've seen this thing heal for like four or 5,000, and anecdotally, I've had people in my chat on stream tell me this is healed for up to 18,000 before. Now, it has been somewhat nerfed in the past that it, um, it used to go for up to 150% more healing. Now it's down to 50%, but the base number is higher and it ramps up faster. So it ramps over four seconds instead of five seconds. And the base is 60 now instead of like 30. So it is cheaper at 2,500. So in a really long fight, this could potentially be pretty good. I haven't really done that a lot on Recon, but if you have two or three tanks on your team, this might be okay. But for just really short skirmishes, Mandate's just gonna be way better. However, after Mandate gets nerfed, we'll see. Um, so yeah, those are your, your basic starting items. I highly recommend as your secondary item either doing Staff of Flowing Water or Redemption, depending on the situation. Both of these are extremely good. Um, Staff of Flowing Water, whenever you trigger this, <coughs> it's basically 90 ability power on you personally. Just aside from anyone else, it's 90 ability power and it's gonna give you 15% extra movement speed. So that right there, is extremely strong. If you said there's an item, this 2300 gold, that's 90 ability power, 10% healing and shielding, mana regen, and also gives you 15% movement speed, I'd sign up for that, all right? But it gives it to your whole team. It gives your whole team 30 ability power and 15% uh, movement speed. Because how you do this is with Font of Life, whenever you CC somebody, if anyone auto attacks that person, they get healed from the Font of Life and it counts as a heal from you. So that means, let me see if I can hover it here. Yeah, ally champion who attacks the marks, heal for such and such. It's a heal from you, and so that's gonna trigger Staff of Flowing Water or Ardent Sensor on that person. So in a team fight, if you have Font of Life, which is very common, usually you'll go Guardian, Font. Um, you go in, you engage on somebody, R plus W, everyone on your team attacks them, then everybody gets that buff. Everybody gets the extra movement speed and the extra AP. And even if it's a champion that doesn't like the AP, it's a vein or you know something like that, they're still gonna like the movement speed. So it's just extremely effective, extremely powerful item. Um, so that one's really good. Now Redemption is underrated, I think right now. Um, it has a really high base heal. It used to be much lower than that. So you don't have to have that much plus healing and shielding to make this worthwhile. So you can comfortably do something like Mandate or lock it, or uh, you know, just any other mythic item. None of them have plus healing and shielding, and still get a lot of value out of going redemption second. Now it does have the plus twenty percent. It used to be only plus ten percent base healing and shielding, so that works very well with lock it or moonstone. Um, and it's very similar to what it used to be. They got rid of the um, the old health region on it, which was kind of silly. But now it has a bit more health. It's got 200 health, 20% healing and shielding, a bit more ability um, CDR equivalency with ability haste. So it's a really good item. And I think it's it's underrated. People don't get it a lot. It kind of gets outshined by Staff of Flowing Water, but <clears throat> it's still pretty good. So it just kind of depends. If you're having a big team fight, then Redemption can be very strong. If you think you're gonna hit like maybe two or three allies in a fight, but if everyone's running around YOLO queuing, everyone's gonna be really split up, like they have a bunch of ranged people and you just can't get everyone together, then it may not be as good. Something like Staff of Flowing Water is gonna be better there. But it can be good. Definitely if you're going Locket or Moonstone, it's worth considering, but even Mandate, it might be worth it, but you gotta think about it, just how the fights are going. Um, and then you have Ardent Sensor, which is also really good. I don't like it as much as Staff, because it doesn't benefit you personally as much. Um, but if you do have a really fed, you know, auto attacker, definitely if you have two on your team, if you have like a Master Yi and then um, a Vayne on your team, then Ardent Sensor might be the better choice. It gives out um, attack speed and on hit damage. Now it does last six seconds instead of three seconds as well, but it's the exact same stuff as Staff of Flowing Water. You just you don't get ability power and movement speed instead you just get attack speed and on hit damage so it's okay in some situations but most of the time staff of flowing water is just so good um and zeke's is one of the final ones that i'll mention here i'm not sure how to feel about this item i feel like it was broken before in terms of like was not working earlier on in the preseason because i had this on 
my buddy Jason who plays Azir, and we went through several team fights and it did almost no damage. And this is supposed to work on spell hits now too. So I don't know if just something weird was going on there or um, or what. But like the stats are okay. It's got the 250 health, the 25 armor, 250 mana. I think it, they may have changed the stats around on it a little bit. Um, okay, no, that's accurate. Um, but now it gives 30 to 70 on hit damage. It does scale with your max health and your AP now, so it works really well with mandate. I don't know why the camera's tripping out like twice. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, so it, it is a tankier option because it's got the health, it's got the armor. The 20 ability haste is very good on Rakan um, versus Staff of Flowing Water has no ability haste. And that's really the biggest knock against Staff or Ardent is they don't have the ability haste. Uh, Redemption does have 15, but you do get 20 with Zeke's. Being able to get something like Kindle Gem or Glacial, I guess they, I didn't even notice they called it Buckler um, instead of Shroud, but... The stats are very good. The stats are probably, I don't know, it doesn't have the AP on it though. And he likes, AP, I mean, 90 AP is a lot off of Flowing Water. <clears throat> so, I don't know. But basically, whenever you immobilize an enemy, so that's a knock up with your W or your R, then your, your single ally that you have marked, their attacks on hit and their ability hits deal you know, some number of on hit extra damage. So something by the time you get this, probably 60 or 70 damage when you take AP and health scaling into account. Um, so that's a lot. I mean, on hit damage is valued at like 25 gold each. So if you're doing like 50 on hit damage, um, what? that's like over a thousand gold value. I don't know the exact number. Let me pull it up here. But let's say that you have like 60 on hit value. I think it's going to be like 1400. Um, 1500 so yeah so that's actually like more value for that one individual person than something like staff of flowing water would do in terms of just like raw gold equivalency but staff of flowing water can apply to your entire team so if it's a thousand gold each and you you know five people get it that's five thousand gold value zeke's is not going to get that number so just kind of depends this is going to be a little bit better in yellow queue, right? When you have a really fed person who has a lot of attack speed, you know, like a Kaisa or uh, Vayne, something like that, then this can be really good. But it's not going to benefit your entire team as much as staff. So it just kind of depends on sort of what's going on. But this this can be really good. If they nerf staff of Fulling Water, which they might, um, then Zeke's is a pretty good backup. But anyways, those are the items. Uh, Mikhail's can be okay it's very very situational if they have an ash or something like that or just like a really good piece of cc then mikhail's as a second item can be extremely strong if you think you're going to have to go mikhail's you know that is going to make you know once again something like locket or boonstone better because it got it has the 20 percent plus healing and shielding on it mikhail's is also a lot better if they have a lot of magic damage on their team because it's got the 50 magic resist so you don't want that stat to go to waste but um, decent item, decent item. You'll see that a lot more in like challenger level play and stuff like that, where that cleanse is like extremely important. But it can be pretty solid. And then cosmic drive, like pretty much nobody's getting that. I was experimenting with that item because it does give you a lot of extra um, ability power. It's seventy five ability power, uh, and also gives a lot of ability haste. But looks like pretty much nobody's getting that item. Um, there it is. It's got a 60%, but only 100 people bought it. So I think it's 3,000 gold is just so much. Like, all the stats are great, but it doesn't do anything to help your team. And it's, like, way, way more expensive than other items. So I think they need to dial this back to a 2,500 gold item and maybe nerf the ability power on it or something. Take it down to 50 ability power. Uh, I'm not really sure, but it's, it's kind of a trap item right now. Now, Ionian boots are getting buffed next patch. I think they're going to 20 ability haste, so... That might shake up the meta a little bit. Rakan right now likes Swiftness the most just because he really wants to move fast, but he also likes CDR. So if that buff does go through, you'll probably be going Ionians. Um, and that'll still be pretty solid on him. As far as runes go, there's 
pretty much only one like primary rune build that people are going for right now, and that's going to be Guardian. Now, you can go for Airy. Like I said, that was sort of an old school build. I don't think it's that great without Athene's Unholy Grail anymore, so I probably wouldn't recommend that one. There's some people going Phase Rush. That is interesting because, you know, you can trigger that off and just W auto attack. Like if you are W, hit them with the R, and then auto attack, you get a bunch of extra movement speed. So that is intriguing, but it'd be pretty bad during the laning phase. And frankly, like the sorcery tree is pretty terrible. Like they, they've nerfed a lot of stuff on a lot of champions um, in this tree, right? They've nerfed Nimbus Cloak numerous times. Mana flow band is not really worth because you already have access to decent mana. Oh, Rory doesn't have pants. Yeah, she has a lot of pants. Um, she can mm -hmm. Celerity is not really that impressive. Um, absolute focus got nerfed. Now, Transcendence is interesting in that you can get 10 ability haste off of it and you get 20% um, of the remaining cooldown, not total cooldown. Um, on your basic abilities whenever you get a kill or an assist. So the fact that he has a lot of like high level cooldowns, that is nice, but <clears throat> it's okay. Scorch is kind of underwhelming, except on extreme poke champs. And then Gathering Storm is it, it's really a later game rune. It's it's all right, but not great. So this is not that amazing on him. Um, now getting um, getting something like Triumph, well. We'll talk about primaries first. So, yeah, I mean, it's basically just Guardian. You, you pretty much have to go Guardian. Just Guardian, and then Font is, if you're going, definitely if you're going to go for um, Staff Flowing Water, Ardent Sensor, this is a must. If you think that you're not going to go for that, if you're going to go for, like, a Locket Redemption build or something, maybe you don't have to go Font. Maybe you could go for Shield Bash. It does add a little bit of extra damage. But in general, I think Font's just going to be better. Oh, she's giggly. Oh, she wants you to chase her. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think this is the most flexible tree here, the conditioning tree. So second wind is very good against poke champs. Bone plating is very good against early all ends. And then conditioning is very good against like mid to late game assassins. <laughs> oh no, is she standing on the laptop? Yes, she was. Oops, well, we gotta okay. move that here. Okay. Well, you put it, I would move it on top of my laptop, which I need to use to work. So, stand on the floor under the ladder where no one should be standing. For a three and a half build, you may want to do that. Well, anyways, so, um, Revitalize is probably what I would get next. Uh, technically, this has a better, Unflinching has a better win rate. It does give you a little bit more resistance against CC, but... Revitalize is going to help out your shielding a lot more, especially if you're going for the Moonstone Locket, um, Redemption, that type of thing. It could be better. But anyways, this is pretty much what I would take. If you're not sure, just Guardian, Font, um, Conditioning, Revitalize. Be a good, good standard build. And then secondaries are a bit more debatable. There are several things that people will go. I personally um, like to go for Ghost Poro and Ulti Hunter. Ghost Poro is really underrated for supports. Um, especially at lower elo brackets where people are not going to be sweeping your wards constantly. Um, it extends your ward timer, gives you basically an extra minute on your wards early. And um, whenever it, uh, whenever your Poro sees somebody, it allows you to stack up to get to 10 stacks faster, which will eventually give you 30 ability power. So really good ability power equivalency is going to be you know over 600 gold value. So that's really nice later on in the game and gives you that vision early. And then Ulti Hunter just allows you to make more plays more often, um, and he has a super high impact ult, so I just really like that rune. Now they are changing it. I don't know if it's next patch or the patch after that, which I think is gonna be a nerf. They're gonna turn it into ability haste instead of flat cooldown reduction. So that means it's gonna be a, a lot weaker if you have more ability haste in your build, which you're probably going to have, you know, with Mandate plus Ionians, it's going to be 40% ability haste, so it's basically going to be closer to, like, 15 to 20% CDR equivalency if you have that much ability haste, if you go for Ultimate Hunter, so we'll see if it's worth it then. If if that's the case, if it's not as good, then Relentless Hunter is pretty good too. But yeah, just these Hunters are, are solid in addition. 
Other secondaries you could consider. Um, you don't want to do free boots because you want to buy boots and start roaming faster with him. But you could do like perfect timing biscuits or um, cosmic good sight, baby. Another one that's sort of popular is over here with Triumph plus the Tenacity Rune, which can be pretty good. Give you some extra gold, a little bit of extra healing, and protect you from CC. So all of those are decent options. Um, okay. Now, all right, so I'll go in here and I'll just show you some combos and we'll end the video. I don't want the video to be too long, but I did want it to be um, somewhat detailed there. Let me... <coughs> Boys in here, this is on my Smurf. Uh, where am I going? Okay, home. Change mode. Okay, there we go. Practice tool. Okay, here we go. We won't, we won't worry about the runes or anything. I don't think it's going to matter. I'm just going to show you a couple of the different combos you can do. So some of the good things to keep in mind are you want to hold your W for as long as you can in fights. You want to wait until they do their movement first. Um, so if you're running at somebody, you are, and then you run at somebody, if it's like a Lucian or a Vayne or whatever, you wait on them to dash first, and then you W after that if you can. Um, and whenever you're starting a fight, if there's a way that you can R and then E in to start the fight first, so you E over to an ally who's already engaged, or you peel off of somebody with R plus E, and that's going to be better. Because you can E while you are immediately, you just can't W immediately whenever you are. So Eing is fine, Wing is not fine. Um, okay, so... That... So you see if we do our W is disabled for that first half second, but you can E for it. If you go back and look at that, the W is going to be disabled, which is weird because it counts as channeling, but you can E while you channel, but you can't R W. It was basically too OP and pro, so that's why people got rid of it. Um, so get rid of those. Dummies here, target enemy dummy. <clears throat> okay. So hold on to your W, wait for them to do their movement, and then um, go for it afterwards. Try to lead it behind them, as I mentioned uh, before. So like if that's a Lucian right there and I was wanting to engage on him like that, you notice how I was a little off center, so if he tried to dash back and you would hit him um, with that W. And you gotta get used to the ranges. It's about the same as an Alistar W combo. Um, and then your shield, as we mentioned before. Shield on one person. Shield on another person. It's pretty small early on uh, when you don't have a lot of ability power. So, you know, it's just something you can do. So your, your basic trading combo is going to be W onto them, auto attack, Q, and then E back out. So if we're trying to trade onto this person, auto attack, and use both shields on them eventually. That's kind of your standard trade. Um, you want to be careful. Like Sometimes you don't have time for that auto attack depending on who's over here. Like they, you might just be able to W, Q, and then. Um, because if they have like a Leona or something else that's going to CC you, you know, you want to be able to get out of there before they hit you with anything. So don't be greedy and stay for that auto if you, um, if it's going to be a problem for you. Okay. So with your RW, like the best scenario you can do most of the time if you want the maximum CC is you W first, hit them, and then after you W them, then you R them. Because um, that way you get the one second knock up, and then as soon as they land, you give them another second, that's two seconds. 
versus if you R plus W, not only is it going to be delayed by a half a second, but you're only going to get like 1.25 seconds worth of CC. So the best combo is going to be knock them up, then W like right as they land, auto attack them a few times, you know, and just do everything that you can there to try to finish them off, right? Um, let me go over here and grab a couple items. Okay, so we're going to do uh, Swiftness Boots, Mandate, Staff Flowing Water, and then usually we'll go Relic Shield. I forgot to talk about that too much, but most of the time you want to go Relic Shield, especially if you're going for, um, it just gives you just more reliable that you're going to get your wards on time in lane, gives you that little bit of extra health regen, which is nice against Poke, still gives you some ability power, so... Just a really good item. It doesn't give you the mana regen though. So if you're gonna harass a lot or if you're going for locket or something else that doesn't have like mana regen early, then you're gonna wanna go um, Frostfang just to make sure that you have that mana regen. <clears throat> okay, and then the other one is, so we did the um, W and then knock up. If you are, then W, you can do that as well. But now we can get into the more sort of advanced combos where, um, let me throw this up here. So this is where Rakan really starts to shine is that he can just do some things that other champs can't. So let's say that you're running up and you're showing up, like there's a YOLO Q fight going on, you know, it's just a random 1v2 you know, your Master Yi is trying to 1v2 their top laner and jungler or whatever, you can say, uh-oh, we gotta go, you know, get him. And you can just run up. Jump on two people. So that engage range there, not only do you get the 40% or 75% movement speed while you're running up to somebody, but then you also get to dash twice for 600 range. So that's 1200 range gap closer. Then you get another 600 with Grand Entrance. So it's like 1,800 gap close. Uh, jump with that to get over there. Um, so he can just get there and just save situations that otherwise look like they you know, might be unsavable for any other champion. And then another really common one is you go onto your ally who's getting attacked. So let's say there's like a Zed that just went onto your AD carry right here. You can um, our shield, it'll CC them, and then knock them up once the CC is about to wear off, and then shield again. So like Zed goes on there, you R them, you can wait for about you know half a second, three quarters of a second, and then W and knock them up and get it. Now, once again, that's gonna be one of the better setups for a lot of your fights is if you can E onto somebody because your E is not disabled like your W is. So you can R E instantly really fast um, to save people so that's why i think he's one of the best champs against assassins just because you have that answer right immediately our shield you give him a big shield if you have guardian it's going to give him a big guardian shield as well then you have the w to knock him up and then you have that other shield and if you take mandate you know then they're gonna your ally is going to get that 20 percent extra movement speed and if you have staff of flowing water they're going to get 35 percent extra movement speed once they auto attack the person. So that's gonna allow your um, your partner to reposition really well. So it all just comes down to, you know, how far do you go, right? Um, and this is where it just takes a lot of practice to figure it out. Let's say, you know, they've got their Jinx over here um, doing a lot and you can't get straight away to the Jinx. You have to decide, um, how am I gonna navigate this fight? And you've got Flash as well where you can think about what you're gonna do. So, you know, you might be thinking, okay, I'm gonna R go in here, knock this person up, see if I can get the jinx, and then try to, you know, jump back out like that. But, you know, if this is a Leona or whatever, and she grabs me whenever I go here, or if I she's not fast enough to grab me there, but she grabs me back here, and I get chain CC'd right here, and then my E either times out um, 
or just this person's too far away, they're out of range right now, then I could, you know, then I'm probably going to die. So, you know, you got to decide how greedy do you want to be. Or if I go too far over there, maybe someone comes in and flanks an Irelia or a Jax or something comes in and flanks and kills the AD carry if I run too far out. So the better, even though maybe I think I need to go get that Jinx, the safer play and the better play might just be, um, you know, R, E, W, knock this person up, then shield back over here, right? And just not go for the back line. So that's what makes Rakan difficult to play, and I think that's what makes him a lot of fun and challenging is trying to figure out how do you use these tools? Are you going to, you know, try to get to the back line? Are you gonna peel? Um, <clears throat> how are you gonna position? Okay, but anyways, that's gonna be it for this guy. It's about 50 minutes. I do wanna keep it under an hour, so thank you very much, Smokey Bun. Um, I do have a lot of Recon footage on the channel. I play them very often on the stream, so be sure to come by, check it out. Um, there are some Recon coaching sessions as well. If you want to flip through the coaching playlist, we've got over 250 coaching sessions. So you can very easily just flip through and you know find those Recon pictures if you want to see it. If you have any questions, just let me know. Stop by the stream. Starts around midnight Eastern Standard Time every night. And thanks again to Smokey. Uh, if you want to sponsor a guide yourself, it's just uh, $30. If you're a channel member, it's just $25. I'll do any champion that you want. And thanks. Have a good day. See you next time.